Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, uh, thank you very much for your attendance today. It's great to uh, have so many people online. We've got many, many joining us as we as we go. Um, delighted to welcome you to um, the second of our early hands-on experience uh, with Microsoft 365 Copilot. Um, delighted to be joined today by Matt Hudson, our pre-sales director, who uh, joined me last week. For those of you who joined last week, I know some of you did, and some of you will be new to this session. So uh, Matt is our pre-sales director. And we're also joined today by Stuart, Stuart Sims, who's our head of workspace pre-sales. And um, we'll be gonna, uh, between us, we'll be sort of demoing and taking you through some of the real life action, as it were, on what's happening with Copilot. So um, so there's the plan. I'm gonna t click on now and I'll um, let the guys turn their cameras off if they want to, because we're gonna click on to the next slide and really look at um, what we're gonna show you today, which is, a quick overview for those of you, as I said before, those of you that didn't um, see the session last week, is a very quick introduction to the M365 Copilot system uh, to explain a little bit about what it does and how it sets up. And then we'll get straight into demos. And I think uh, the learning from last week was to get more time on demos, more time to show you exactly how the software is working. Um, just a quick uh, caveat, the, uh, this is live. So we're using our live tenants, we're using our live data. Um, so we have to be fairly sensitive about it. So bear with us as we move through this to make sure that we're doing the right things for the, from the data uh, uh, perspective, but also um, it's live uh, co-pilot, which is still in preview. So uh, it is uh, a bit like working with animals or children. Um, it's quite a risk to do that live. So, uh, so bear with us if anything goes wrong, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll catch up and try and uh, try and recover it. Um, so, let me uh, let me move on. So I think um, just you know in, in very high level of, of what Microsoft 365 Copilot is about. I think most of you by now, I'm sure, will have had a chance to look at some of the Microsoft data, some of the presentations, or whatever. But probably haven't. Most people haven't had a chance to play with it in anger yet, which is why we're going to show you more of the demos. But essentially, what it brings together is the large language model, uh, the OpenAI model from uh, from uh, the Microsoft uh, uh, suite. Um, it introduces this concept of the Microsoft Graph, which has always been there, but it's really using the data that you use on a daily basis. So it brings all that together. And I'll talk to you about the Microsoft Graph and what that means in a second. It, it sits within all your Microsoft 365 apps. So the, your favorite apps that you know and love and use on a daily basis. And it also brings in outside data as well from the internet in a safe way. So that in kind of encapsulates the whole system as it were in a very simple way. And it enables you to do language, natural language query on top of that to get some answers and get some insights from the data and all those things. So I think everyone's probably aware of that, but it's important to explain it. The Microsoft Graph is really the key to this for me, and certainly in our early user experience, is grounding the copilot in your own data and, and in seeing how it learns. But also very key is making sure it enforces the security permissions. Um, the data that we have to manage is is something we're learning about. We're, we're managing our data. We already had good data protection on some of the files we share and files we use, but this um, system exposes that if it's not if it's not absolutely uh, you know, secure and clear about who should see what data. So that's a very critical part of this as we're learning. And in fact, next week, we'll talk to you a little bit more in the next session about how we built it from the ground, I, how we introduced it, set it up, uh, from an infrastructure perspective and manage that. We'll talk to, talk to you a little bit more about that next week. Um, important also, Microsoft would make, make it clear that your data is not being used for training. It doesn't go back into the LLM models. It doesn't get used to train the data, to train the data on, the, on the large language models. So um, very important, it just is kept within your tenant, within your environment, your own data. And then this, this thing called semantic index, which sounds very grand, but that's the thing that actually makes it all hang together and makes it work. Um, and that's the bit that really where the magic happens, as far as I'm concerned. This is where it goes out and looks at all the things you're doing in Outlook for events and emails. It looks at your file system. It looks at, uh, you know, it re respects your security. It looks at the devices you're using because it work also on the mobile as well as uh, as well as on your on your device and your PC. Um, it looks at tasks. It looks at chats and channels and teams. Everything, and it indexes it all, and it, it builds this fabulous semantic index. To give you to give it a, a, an understanding of how your data is being used, but also the intent by which you want to find the data. So it's very different from search, and that's the one of the things that has been a huge learning right in the early days. Is this is not asking it questions as you would do in a, a, a traditional search engine. This is understanding your intent. So it's learning how you want to use the system, but also learning how you use your data 
and therefore giving you much, much better responses to some of the questions you're asking it. There's a whole list of things around it being designed for, for enterprise customers. As you know, it's, it's enterprise only today. It comes for 300 users plus only in the EA as, as it stands. That will change, talking to Microsoft last week. Uh, we're going to see in the early part of next year, uh, I think you'll start to see it being rolled out more into the wider community around CSP and other, other areas. There may still be some, some restrictions on the size uh, of, of uh, users you can, you can buy, but we're still going to learn. We're learning about that. And we're still asking Microsoft on a daily basis where that looks uh, in the next few weeks and months. But early next year, you're going to have much more wider access to this technology. Um, and as you see down the list here, it goes to all the things I've kind of already touched on. The key one here is, is about security and making sure the data is, is, is kept within your compliance boundaries, but also um, it learns about the processes you use. It learns about how the data and the queries you're asking it going forward. The last thing is before, I'm going to get into a demo now just to, 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 to get into it, but um, the last thing is to talk about Microsoft 365 chat, because one of the things that when you first load this software up, it kind of appears in lots of different places. And we'll show you that as we go through the, the applications demos that we're gonna show you. Um, but, but one of the things that comes out everywhere really is this concept of Microsoft 365 chat. And those prompts exist, um, or the ability to, uh, to, to, to use those, those prompts in the large language model uh, appear in all, a bunch of different places. They appear in Teams, they appear in Bing, on, the, on uh, in Edge, uh, and also in, in, in most of your 365 apps today. And so we'll take you through that and show you what that looks like because it's very important to get get you know familiar with where this stuff appears and how you start to use it because when i first loaded this it was kind of difficult quite uh, sometimes to understand exactly which piece you should be using so if i drop now hopefully you can see that I drop now to my my browser this is all running an edge browser um, and the other thing to say we said last week is that the apps today and you can see this is my home page from my Microsoft 365 apps. You can see I've got Outlook, Teams, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint in here. And I've got this new button called M365 Chat, which is the button of the page we're on now. So this can give me access immediately. And I think Matt is going to show you a bit more detail on this and how he uses this to go out and query, give me a catch up on the messages. What does my diary look like today? And all those kind of questions. And it will go in and bring that forward. And it will be very specific to your data. You can request it in a specific uh, environment for a specific person or a specific file, and it'll go out and look for that data. Um, but the point here is that the reason I'm showing today on the browser is it works best in the browser versions or the online versions of all these applications today. It is every day we look at it, every day it's being introduced more and more into the full fat versions on your desktop. Um, but it's much more, uh, much more engaging using it on the, on the web versions today. And so using web versions of Outlook, uh, which is new a new way to use Outlook. It's called the new Outlook. If you click a button in your application and it drops you into a web version of it as well. But we'll talk about that more next week. But what I want to show you here is just so there's a, there's a one access to to getting my uh, to getting into my um, uh, my M365 um, chat area using Copilot. So I can ask you these questions and we'll show you that. If I go to a standard web page, um, what I've shown you what I've, I should Shown and talked about up here is in, in the browser. So actually in the browser, I have this button here top right, which you can all have access to now, which, which if I click on, it holds the essentially the Bing chat and the M365 chat. And actually what this page has done, I've, I've did it before I set this up, is I asked it to generate a page summary of the page that I'm on. So if you've tried this already with ChatGPT or within Bing already, then you'll understand this. But it gave a quick summary of the page. You can ask it questions about this page. And this is in the pub, this is essentially the internet going out, dri you know, driving the, the search on the internet pages or the using Copilot on the internet pages. So you can see how that builds up. You can also see that it, it points to uh, referencing as well. So it'll give you references about what it's doing and you can ask it other questions. So, so that's the first thing. If I go to M365 chats, there's another toggle here. I then have access to the same thing I just showed you in the previous browser version. So this is now pinned inside um, inside my browser and it can ask me and I can go and summarize emails I can get this corporate data the data I use on a daily basis the private data as you were uh, as it were uh, and that can be used for copilot as well so you can see how I can access this inside my day-to-day -day use of the applications so that's kind of just to give you a sense of, I'll show you the teams one as well um, just now because I wanted to show you just a little bit about how it works so in teams and I've just popped this out so you can see it in teams I now have a I have a little app called M365 Chat. So it's just another one of my contacts 
that I can click on inside Teams and it'll pop out and it'll show and let me do the same thing. So you've seen it now in the home page of my Microsoft 365 apps. You've seen it on the browser. You can click it down and use it inside the browser or you can use it inside Teams. So there's a lot of different ways to access this uh, access this, this system um, and, you, and you just have to learn how to use it and learn where it pops up. And when you see that little logo, this logo appears inside a lot of different applications and browser and that's where you see Copilot embedded as well. So you'll start to see that coming through on the applications. So that's the example of it. I'm going to go and ask it all the questions I asked it. Here's a list of things that I asked it about, you know, find me some Copilot related uh, webinar data and it won't find it. But it will also reference it. So it will not, not only will that, it will come up and show me there's the PowerPoint, actually the PowerPoint we're using today, and I can go and click on that and find it immediately inside my own data graph. The other one I wanted to show you before I move on to show you a bit more about Excel was to show you how we're using uh, Teams and AI inside the Teams uh, uh, meetings, because this is this is also using uh, Teams uh, enterprise version, and it's showing you how AI is building incredible fidelity inside uh, inside your meetings. So this is a meeting actually that I had last month, but um, this is a video that we did with myself and Richard Devere heads up our uh, social engineering or social uh, social engineering uh, security stuff inside our security team. And we did a video together, and what this did was it, this produced, there's the video you can see on the left here, and as I click on this, you'll start to see uh, it references parts of the video. So it summarized, the AI, AI notes have summarized the meeting. Interesting picture of me, I shouldn't have put that on the screen. Um, but anyway, and I can click on different areas and show you in re reference to the conversation and what I was talking about in that conversation and where it was. I don't know what I was talking about there. I was obviously swatting a fly at that point, whatever. So the point here is that you can you can basically get a very quick summary. What you can also do is do a full transcript of the session, which can also be quite embarrassing. If I look down, there's me going, yeah, 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 in response to what Rich is talking about. So it will pick out all these things. But if I click on this, it'll go to that part of the video and actually enable me to run that video and listen to that question. So what you've also seen here, is, so you can see how it's, it's transcribed the data, it's transcribed the video session. You can click very you know, simply between it, take the notes from it, understand what any actions were in a meeting, all those kind of things. What I've also done here is I've clicked up here the Copilot button inside Teams, and it's popped up this other box here on the right-hand side. So you can see how Copilot sort of appears as this, this, new, this new bar on the right-hand side of the applications. This is a question I've just asked it. So just for sake of time, I asked it a question here, which was show me mentions of phishing inside this video, inside this meeting. So it went away and it came back immediately with a whole bunch of topics that it, that it found uh, related to phishing when we were talking about phishing and the phishing attacks of the organization. Um, what's really interesting about this piece, uh, as, as I noticed when I, when I did it, was I put in phishing with a PH, right? And actually what it transcribed, because I'll ask it here, if I can, if I roll over this this reference, it shows me actually what it's recorded in that conversation, and what it's picked up is phishing with an F. So it actually recorded it as with, with an F, but it understood that I was asking about phishing and pulled up this topic. So it's really quite clever. It's, it's relating to the topic we're talking about. It's understanding some of the things that we're doing, um, and you can see how powerful that is in terms of recap of meetings, particularly big meetings with lots of people. It will capture all the conversations. It will replay all the topics and give you some really great feedback on what's happening. So anyway, I hope that gives you some sense of, of what's happening inside here. There's so much more to talk about, but it gives you some idea of how, with Copilot built in, how it's, it enables you to really get some great data insights and really capture some meeting data, meeting um, actions and information insights of people that weren't actually in that session. So we can go out and give it back to them. They can watch it and, uh, and, and capture the data later on. So if I go back up here now, go back up to my browser, um, what I'm going to do very quickly now before I hand on to, to Matt is I'm going to go to Excel here and just quickly open the files. Here's all my Excel files. I've got a file here called Sustainable Materials, which is a, let's call it a data file. So I'm going to, I'm going to look at that now. I'm going to get rid of this one in the browser because I'm going to show you how this comes up. So here's my data, standard data, there's a whole bunch of stuff here, has to be in, in a uh, table format for it to be seen. So if I now click on Copilot, this is where I cross my fingers and hope the Copilot's powered up and ready to roll. Um, and it seems to be, which is great. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I'm going to look at um, adding a few things. So here's a standard spreadsheet, right? And I am the worst spreadsheet user in the world. My 
finance team will tell you that. So I just I need them to help me build it and help me build the you know the, the, the Excel files, the Excel things that I need. So I'm going to ask it to do some things that would be way beyond my capability. So if I now copy this into the this is into the Copilot box down here. I've already got it preset. So I'm going to copy it in, in real time. So I'm going to add a new sales column and I'm going to ask it to do different percentages based on the low, medium and high discounting that's in that discount column in the, in the spreadsheet. So if I click on that, this is where I cross my fingers, uh, I click on that and it goes away and it's trying to look at the data now and trying to generate what I'm asking it to do in, in a format that makes sense uh, in using the Excel uh, formulas. So what it's doing now is it's going away and thinking about it. It's going to come up with some uh, thoughts, I hope, and questions. And oh wow, it worked. There you go. Uh, always good on a demo. So here it comes, and it's come up with a, a suggestion. So it said, "Here's what I've built for you. Here's here's the the here's the formula that I think makes it work. You can actually look at that now, and I can actually get it explained to me as a novice user of Excel. You know, deep." Uh, deep dive spreadsheets, um, I can ask you what it's done. It's said it's going to multiply the values of the Solcom, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see how it actually goes away and gives you some really good insights. So what I actually want to do, if I hover over this, it shows me the column. And is that roughly what I want in that column? Looks about right. So I'm going to insert that column into the, into the, into the spreadsheet. So there it appears now. Now, if I go and click on one of these, what you'll see is there's the, there's the, um, uh, the formula that's built to go and do that. Now, there is zero chance of me being able to do that myself in real time. So the fact that it's built that for me, I've, I've actually learned something now. I've learned about how to use if commands and whether it makes any sense, and I might play around with it now, so I've, I've actually learned how to do it. What I'm then gonna do is take another uh, cut on this. So I wanna see, I'm quite visual, so I wanna see a bit more of how the data uh, lays out. So I'm gonna put another question here, or another, ask it to do something else for me, which again, I could do, but it would take me a while. So I'm gonna add data bars to it, to show me some visualization and show me how I can see where that data pans out. So now it'll go off and it should uh, go away quite quickly on this one and build me uh, a little bit of a, a, a graphic now to show me within the data table where the, where the highest and lowest ranges are. So it takes a bit of a time, it's taken its, it's, taken its time to do it. So hopefully uh, any second it should do it. Um, well, what this should, oh, there you go, it's done it. So you can see now, so that's a that's a function that I could go up and if I knew Excel well, I could go and get it done, but it's gone and done that for me. And if I scale down the data here, you can see how it's building up the data and all the different columns, and it'll show you exactly where the data is. So it's a very good visual representation. We now look and see where the big stuff is and how we go and manage it. Um, if I then wanted to ask it some more questions, let me just give it some, uh, give it a more of a, uh, another question to ask it. So if I wanted to ask it, for instance, in this case, I want to ask it, show me the percentage of units sold where the discount band is not. I aware I've got no discount on some of these products. Show me where the, where the, uh, where the sold units are. And what it'll do now is it should go away and, and think about what I've asked it, and then it'll pop up a little um, graphic. There you go. So it's popped up a little graphic here on the right-hand side and said, there you go, Here's, I've created a pivot table based on the prompt you've just asked me. Is this what you want? And actually, you can click on that now and say, yes, I want it, and I can it, it add it to a new sheet, so it create another another sheet in the spreadsheet or whatever. So you can see how that how powerful that is. You can keep querying it and asking it questions and asking it questions with data, and it'll pop it up and say, is this what you want? Yes or no, and if it's not, we can ask something else down here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna ask it for insights. So um, I literally just type in insights, and what it'll do is, it'll, again, it'll go away and think about it, and it will come up with, do you want to show some data insights? So I'll say, yes, show me some data insights. So give me some stuff I haven't thought about. Give me some ideas about how to use this data and show me the insights. So what it should do is come up and, and pop up something that gives me another view of, of my data, how it could be you know, graphically represented. Um, and then obviously then what I'd like to do is go and get it to put some graphs into the into the spreadsheet. So it's analyzing the data. It's looking at it. It's trying to come up with the the answers hopefully it'll come up in a second and get the idea now that it takes its time to think sometimes um, but it should come up with a little a little graphic representation of here's some here's some ideas here's some things you can go and do with it um, like it did on the one before so it's taking some time here so there you go oh there you go it did it it took, took its time but it got there um, it did it a lot quicker than I did it so there is given units sold by date, little graph is to add to the new sheet. So actually what I want it to do now is just add all insights, right? So it's, it's gonna go away and think about that and see if you can just add some insights to a new sheet um, on, top of this, on top of this data. 
Um, and what it'll do, there you go, it started to do it. So it's go away, it'll think about putting some graphs in that it's thought through, it's seen the data, it's seen some of the insights that we, uh, that, it, that, that it can generate from this, uh, from this data on the, gra on the uh, spreadsheet um, and build it. So hopefully now, um, in a minute, or less than a less than a minute, it should come up with some of the graphics that you've got on the right on the right on the right hand side. There, you can see it builds it into the sheet and sticks it on top of it. Um, and so it's taking a little longer now. It's obviously uh, at lunch today, so it takes it's taking a little bit longer. But this is one of the things using uh, live previews like uh, Copilot. It, it sometimes gets stuck. It so sometimes gets you know, slowed down in data, depends on how much data is being used at the back end. It also probably depends on how many people are using it in our tenant at the same time. So these are the, the nuances that we're learning about. So it's gonna go and do it. I'm gonna click, oh, okay. I was about to say it, was, it wasn't gonna work. It is working, you can see it's building it a bit slowly. So it's putting the graph, it's putting it, there you go, it's done. So it's taken, it took a little bit longer than it did last time I did it. So hence I was panicking. But actually it's done it and you can see it's putting all the, de the details and the graphics. That would take me a while to go and build that and also set it up. What you can also see is it's put the tables in. So it's put the pivot charts in underneath or the pivot tables underneath that it relates to these graphics. So you can see that if I scan across, it's built all those things and put it into the, it's putting it into the, into the sheet. So it's added it as sheet too. So I think, I think, and then I can go back to the table and I can do other queries on it. So I think that gives you some sense of it. I'm going to pass over to, to Matt now in a second, but hopefully that gives you some sense of how you get around this and how it's starting to be more embedded in some of the applications uh, that we're using. So Matt, hopefully um, I can now uh, pass over to you. I'm going to push to you. Um, I'm going to make you the organizer and now that you should have control to be able to take over the screen, if that works. I do. Thank you, Scott. And uh, actually, firstly, what I'll do, I'll probably talk about, we've got a question coming in already from Maxwell, um, Gregory. So that question is probably more around, um, it's obviously at the moment, it was running a little bit slowly on Scott's screen. I mean, it happens sometimes with um, a with demos, but also with, um, with Copilot, obviously still in preview. And that wasn't actually down to the local CPU or memory that's running on the local apps, it's down to the, the cloud service. It's a contended service uh, at the moment, so it's, it's sometimes take a bit slower, sometimes be really rapid and, and come back quickly. Um, it does have a minor overhead on your local CPU, um, but we're talking, it's, it's pretty negligible at the moment. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the a little bit more day-to-day -day stuff that any sort of person might use Copilot for. So Scott had a few use cases there, which were specifically the Excel one that will affect specific um, team personas or, or, or people personas. So if you're an accountant or, uh, or somebody who uses Excel quite a lot, then you're going to get a huge value out of that Excel stuff. But, um, but if you're not, then you might get value in another, in Word or PowerPoint as a marketing person. But actually, there's a bunch of stuff that everybody's going to get huge amounts of value from. And, and because everybody's different in this world, we have a, a kind of neurodiversity footprint that spans massive uh, range of uh, skills or capabilities. I want to talk about a little bit more how that can help people like myself who um, start to get a little bit older now. I'm on the wrong side of 40, fast approaching 50, so I need a bit of help with memory, with email, emails that maybe I received a few days ago. I can't remember quite what the gist of those emails are, or around organizing my day, or creating some fun in my day, or, or maybe even just around language and how I can adopt language and, and use it better. So um, you saw from Scott earlier, this is the this is the web version of Microsoft 365 Chat, which I can get online just by going to Bing. Um, this is online, but it is still secure. So this is absolutely inside our tenant. I'm on the M365 Chat area here. I'm going to ask it a few questions. So I'm going to ask it first. Okay, um, where have you mentioned yesterday in the emails and chats? I was really busy yesterday, so I want to know, did I miss anything that I was mentioned that I didn't action yesterday? So this is going to go away, look at all my emails and chats. Um, and find out if there's anything that I didn't action yesterday that I might need to do. Um, when that returns back, um, hopefully it will return back. Um, I'll be able to understand actually, did I miss something? Did I did, did I need to action something? Or do I need to go ahead and think, yeah, this, everything's great, let's move on. As you can tell, it is running somewhat slower than usual. So um, I will move on briefly as soon as this gets to the end but if it doesn't i'll move on to uh, a different demo it's not a problem here we go finally got there look for emails or chats and then it's going to come back saying something there we go sorry i couldn't find emails chats mentioned yesterday yep okay well what about what about last wednesday so i was 
I was off last Wednesday and I can't remember whether anything happened last Wednesday that I didn't action. So again, context, it's context aware, a bit like ChatGPT. It understood, I asked an email, I asked a question about, whereas I mentioned yesterday in emails to chats, and I don't have to write the same message again. I have to go, okay, where was I mentioned last Wednesday in email or chats? I'm just building on that prompt, adding more uh, context to that prompt, and it'll go away and found some information. And there you go, I was mentioned in a Teams chat with Ian Gerard, Vulcan, uh, Stu, Andrew, William, Megan, uh, mentioned chat asking for your input. So I can then look at that, I can click on that, and it'll bring up Teams. So that's quite real straightforward stuff. I can ask about what was going on yesterday, what happened today, what's um, what's my what am I going to do tomorrow? A um, bit similar to Scott, so I can continue that conversation here um, and add more things to it, or I can start a new chat. And my previous chat will still stay there, and I can go back into that chat at a later date and ask it more questions if I want to, or I can delete that chat and it will go away and clear that from the uh, from the history and will clear it from the uh, my semantic index. So I'm going to ask a new question. There's a webinar next week on Copilot. Um, and the Ultima are presenting, which is the third in the series. I hope you've watched the first one and currently watching the second one. Um, Scott's asked me to write uh, an intro into that, um, although Scott pretty much does most of the presentations I found here. Um, but I need to write an intro as to what it's going to do. So a bit like, again, ChatGPT, it will go ahead and it will generate some creative content based on what I want it to do. What I will also do then is go, oh, okay, well, that's an interesting stuff. I want to know who the best presenter is at, at Ultima, but I actually want to know who's presenting this webinar. Um, so I've asked it that, and externally, if it looked at the internet, it probably won't know that. But because I've been working, or there's um, there's internal chats, internal PowerPoint presentations going on, it's going to look at those in my semantic index and understand, right, uh, is there any way to find out? And at this point, it said, sorry, I can't find a present the webinar. You might want to reach out to organize it with more information. So that's really useful. What I should have said is Scott's the presenter and uh, and he is uh, and he is delivering that next week. So let's go to the next one. Um, diary uh, management. So I've got a I've got a request coming in from one of my um, from uh, the resource team inside of Ultima and they've asked, all right, I need someone to attend some meetings next week about uh, cloud and AI. Um, uh, so I've got a couple of people uh, who can look at that in my team. I've got probably more than that, but I've asked who's busy next week. And Stuart Sims looks like Stu. You haven't got as much stuff going on as Craig has. Um, now I can't read their calendar if they, if it weren't for the fact that I'm part of their team. Um, so as I'm part of their team, I can read their calendars because I have access rights to it. So it's looking in my semantic index still, but it's looking at other people's calendars. So it's like, okay, great. Um, so I now know that Stu's more um excuse more available but actually oop, let's go back to here i've flipped off so actually i want to ask it now who's more appropriate for a co-pilot call with a customer hopefully it's going to say Stu because Stu is running our co-pilot practice but i'm going to ask that question who might be more suitable for this call because i don't really know whether Stu is more capable of doing a co-pilot call with a customer or well, look at that we're lucky today um or um or whether craig is and what it's done is reference a bunch of bunch of conversations that i can go and find out from as to where stu's been involved in creating stuff so it knows the reason my semantic index that, that sorry that stuart is more capable of doing this and actually i've seen that it's like it's talking about a bunch of things he's doing and he's been working on uh he's been working on some interesting information here so that's pretty cool. So I can actually open up some of the work you've been doing on Copilot and see a bit more. Start a new chat again. And actually, I've got a team meeting next week and uh, and I'm a fun guy and all that. So I want to find out, uh, I want to get a few questions um, quiz. So again, simp uh, simply, this is the sort of thing that ChatGBT can do as well, obviously. But actually, this is inside my context and, and I can ask it to do questions around uh, uh, Ultima people if I wanted to, and it could read the information from the semantic index as well. So, sure, here you go. Here's some questions about, uh, and there's the answers, more questions about geography, and there's the answers. Really quite cool. Uh, and I'm going to put that into a PowerPoint presentation later. Um, but those questions seem a little bit easy, so I'm going to ask it to create some more stuff. So this is, again, all inside of a private chat that I'm having with my M365 chat. It reaches out to the internet when it's not looking intern internally. And I've now asked it, say, these questions are really easy. My team are really smart. Can I please uh, get some more difficult questions? And it'll go ahead and do that. 
So I will wait for a couple of seconds to let that return with some more challenging questions about America. Again, context aware, he already knows my first question. So I've just now asked a secondary question, how he can expand on that. And there we go. So I'm going to flip over now to um, Teams. This is Teams in here. I'm actually inside a chat with myself because I'm um, lonely and I only want to chat to myself. But what I'm going to do is um, talk a little bit more about that language piece. So um, quite often within, um, well, within businesses, we have different people with different skills and, and different capabilities, but, but also people with um, a certain level of kind of anxiousness when it comes to communicating um, sometimes. So what, what we see is people spending a lot of time creating emails, creating content, even a Teams chat. So where people might be a bit nervous about sending a uh, message to somebody, maybe their superior, maybe their, maybe the CEO or whatever, we can actually get uh, teams and thus Copilot to help us do that. So, uh, and it doesn't really matter how poor your your grammar is or, or whether you're typing really quickly. I can now say where where are C and Tim next week. Pretty badly worded thing, but that's fine, and, and that would be perfectly fine for a chat. But I launched the Copilot assistant inside of Teams, get it to rewrite a message for me, and it says when when do we meet Tim next week? Pretty good. Um, so that's great. So so. I think what we're going to do is go a little bit more, um, could expand that a little bit more. So what it's done now is, it, is it's capitalized the when, replaced where with when, it actually knows that uh, the context in it. We've added a capital T, put a question mark on the end, it's based on the spelling. But actually, we'll see how far they can go. So what the deal with Tom and his promotion? So it really is, that's really quick now. So it really is, it gets an understanding uh, of what types of things you're typing, and then it can really understand even, even a really badly typed message, what it is. So a little bit more, a little bit more useful stuff now, but I just kind of to give you a demo of the fact that that can be inside of Teams. So throughout my day, um, I might want to be sending a, a message to my boss. So I have too much work to do, help me perfectly fine and it can rewrite for me. I am overwhelmed by my workload and need some assistance, but actually I want to make that more professional. So we have a context here. It's able to understand what I'm asking Copilot and is then able to be able to make that more concise, make it longer, gradual, or whatever. So if I'm writing a casual message, but then I want to write it more to my boss, I want to say that make that more professional. And I go away, my workload is too much for me to handle. Can someone help me out? Okay, that's a bit snappy. I want to make it a bit longer, so it's a little bit more friendly. I'm facing the challenge with managing my current workload. I'd appreciate it if you can offer assistance and support. So these these things are all helping um, kind of frame conversations and provide spelling corrections, provide um, much much more uh, much more appropriate language for the audience that we're actually deploying. Uh, the last one I'm going to do is just a quick one here. Um, is um, some, sometimes wording kind of uh, things to superiors or, or things you're not really sure about can be a bit, um, bit overwhelming sometimes. So we want to rewrite. I'd like to talk to Fred. He's caused me a real pain in my day. Uh, did the day work? Can we chat? Um, clearly some spelling. We've capitalized Fred and whatever. But it actually makes it a little bit more friendly in the eye and makes means that I don't have to worry about the language. I don't have to worry about how it's, how it's seen. Again, I can make it longer, readjust it, and then ultimately make it more professional. And now I'm pretty comfortable from my initial thing I was going to send to um, my boss. I've now gone from that to my work performance is affected by some unresolved issues with Fred. I really like to request a meeting with you address in a positive way. That's a much more forward thinking, uh, uh, appropriate uh, message or chat. Uh, to do. And obviously, if you extrapolate like that to go on top of Outlook, you can type entire messages and get it to reword it in a more professional, a more casual, or whatever way. Because that's a little bit about that. I'm going to change over to uh, Stuart. He's got a really interesting use case. So, um, Stuart's been um, working with uh, ChatGPT for quite a long time. But the problem with ChatGPT is, it, is it's, um, it's just open. Uh, people can post anything in there, and, and the and your content, your business, um, uh, your, your business value, and all of your IP is sat inside stuff. You don't really want to send that across the internet and to, for a customer, for a Microsoft to be able to read. So this is now inside of Copilot. We can do a couple of things. We can feed information to Copilot, business information to Copilot, but give it context as to what you want in return. 
So Stuart, do you want to explain a little bit about what this is? Um, explain how, I guess, um, how this will help you in a day-to-day -day activity and how um, this really accelerates what's going forward. And, and a nuance of I can, this demo is really cool because it takes a bunch of compliance and regulatory information with a bunch of creative information and blends the two together to create a compliant output. So yeah, Stu, do you want to talk a bit more about that? Yeah, sure. Cheers, Matt. Um, yeah, just to set the stage a bit. So, so in pre-sales, we're part of the um, co-pilot pilot group. Um, it's a funny thing to say, but but um, yeah, the part of the rollout of, of, of Coblock. So, um, so in pre-sales, we've sort of targeted ourselves um, with activity or targeted activities um, that are both sort of time-consuming and somewhat mundane as things that we want to try and address address with with Copilot. So, one of those activities is publishing our consulting services on, on what's called the Microsoft Marketplace, which is effectively uh, a shopping mall for professional IT services that customers can, can purchase, basically. So that process involves uh, creating a, a written service offering, a service description that needs to meet several sort of Microsoft requirements uh, to be published. Um, so once you've created that service description, it goes through a Microsoft validation process uh, which can take up to two to three days to actually get through the for the process. Um, and if there's something wrong in in your service description, they'll throw it back at you and say, uh, make these corrections and send it through the process again. And that process will again take two or three days because you can see that sort of time can really build up and add up. So you so so what we effectively want to do is try and get it right first time, obviously. Uh, now, and Microsoft provides some great guides on how to produce the perfect service offering, um, and, but these guides are very lengthy and there's multiple pages you need to trawl and, and read up on, and then, the, you know, they obviously, like anybody, make changes to, to, to those guidelines as well, so, so we have to go through that process again of rereading. So, so yeah, that was the, the task at hand, if you like. Um, so what so what we started with um so just show you and illustrate another page here so the first step is that uh was in understanding how to how to you know how to approach this and the approach was to use um prompting or learn how to use prompting with microsoft receipts of copilot so this is the art of interacting with copilot asking it the right questions to get decent output so you get some really good sort of guidance from microsoft uh, on that and um yeah this is just a an example of some of the sort of class where we get to teach you how to do that um so yeah you're not don't, you don't expect you know there's no massive training course to go on this is very much um it's all about conversation and and you know learning how to communicate with, with your copilot so that's the sort of learning curve we went through there um, yes, to give you an idea of uh, the activity. So, so this web page here, this is a Microsoft web page with all the sort of guidelines and governance on on uh, creating that service description I was talking about. So, so what we can do on this page is effectively I can get Copilot to query this whole page and extract all the guidelines, the important key activities that I need to do to get my service description right, or I can or, or I can zone in on the bits on the web page that I exactly need to talk about. So I'm going to click on copilot up in the top right corner here and yeah so i'm going to use bing chat or which is now called microsoft copilot i'm not going to use microsoft 365 chat because that will also in query my internal data so i don't want to get any internal data included in this at, at this point so i'm going to click on on bing chat so yeah like i said i can query this whole page or i can zone in on the bits of information i know are, are important which is what i'm going to do here so i'm going to highlight the information that I know is important to get my service description right. Um, and then as you see in the right here, it's uh, giving me the option to select that text and bring it into the conversation I'm having with Copilot. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click send. So it's now brought all that information into the, the conversation. So I'm not going to get my pre-canned prompt that I made earlier. Um, and I'm going to ask it to effectively extract all the key guidelines so this again this can take a bit of work to get your prompt right so uh, so i know what i need from here so i said can you extract the key guidelines for creating an assessment consulting service so i'm just going to click submit there so that's going to whir away and hopefully come up with a, a list of um 
sort of activities or a list of things that I need to make sure that I'm addressing when creating my my service description. So I'm gonna let let that whir away. Um, so yeah, so yeah, there's an example there. So the name of your offer will appear as the title of your listing. Commercially, it should be limited to 200 characters. So little things like that. That you know, if I go over 200 characters, they're gonna throw it back at me and say start again. Okay, so let that spin off. Um, so once I've got all that, um, I'm gonna go away and build build my prompt in terms of what I want um, to ask Word to do in this instance. So I'm gonna get Word to generate that service description for me. So this is where it's doing a couple of things for me here. It's gonna make sure I'm getting my governance right. And it's also gonna assist me in creating that service description. So it's gonna be doing a bit of sort of creative sort of um, activity there as well. So I'm gonna get out my uh, Copilot prompt and I'm going to grab my, um, again, my free can prompt here. So I'm going to start off with, uh, can you write a Microsoft Microsoft sales offer for a free two hour service for Microsoft Copilot? This is an example of the service that I'm creating. Um, and I'm going to base it on an internal document. So this is where the power of Copilot can leverage your internal data. So I'm going to point it at an internal document. Um, so this is our internal service description. So we obviously create our own services and publish our services on our own website. So I'm just pointing it at that service description we've got internally. Um, so that's that. Uh, so then I also want to add in all those guidelines that I just got off the, the previous screen. So I'm going to put that into this chat as well. So that's just a list of the guidelines. And I can add to this. So if, so if I as a, a manager, for example, want whoever's doing its activity to do some other things like, you know, um, use a certain sort of approach or spelling or something like that, I can add that to the list of things to do. So I'm going to click generate here. So keep in mind, so, so far, um, reading all those guidelines, um, you, you know, if you're coming to this fresh, that's going to take you a good good couple of hours to read all those pages of content from with Microsoft. So it's, it's saved me a good amount of time of extracting all that the key information that I need. And again, generating this draft version of the service description, again, this would this would typically take, you know, it's probably half a day's work to, to get this sort of right. Um, so it's given me a start for 10. So, so yeah, massively saved me loads of time here. So, so what I, what I know hundred percent from here that it's done things, it's structured this in the way that Microsoft wanted to be structured. So that's one, one tick box, you know, it's limited the number of words that I can use in the right places. So that's the second thing it's done and a bunch of other things that, that yeah, you obviously won't, won't, won't sort of, um, know, but I can see, you know, from my mind, my, my viewpoint, it's got a lot of things right here for me. Yes, I still need to tweak this. So it's, it's, you know, fully described our service properly, but yeah, massively saved me a lot of time there. And then, and then from here, I can then leverage the power of Copilot to, you know, if I want to make the, the description more formal or, or more engaging, I can do all that, those things with, with Copilot as well. So yeah. And I just, uh, just to, yeah, just to add here, I'm using the, the full word client here as opposed to the web version. So you get both options of using both there. But um, yeah, that's that's my um, use case in a nutshell. So yeah, we're on to the next one now. So um, yeah, that's that's been really useful from, from my perspective. Um, back Good. to you. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. So I'm going to leave you up. If you stay up on the video, I'll try and take control of the screens now. Um, hopefully you can see that. That's the... Um, that's the, the the next slide really was okay, just yeah. summarise what you're going to talk about. This is the this is the services that we can provide, right? Yeah, for sure. So so um, in terms of Microsoft 365 Copilot, uh, we've created a number of of services uh, that we can uh, help you with that journey on. So this is the first one, which is the Microsoft 365 Copilot Readiness Assessment. So this is a funded engagement. Um, so it's pretty much a, a two hour conversation with with yourselves. Um, and this is the sort of agenda right and so, the, so the, the output of this is to give you a clear guideline of where we believe you are in terms of readiness for Copilot and what your next steps are effectively. So the agenda includes, we'll take you through um, an adoption strategy for Copilot. So the first thing we've noticed, this is a, you know an unprecedented um, use of, of software. So it's not just like a your typical work word processor or other bit of software that you, you know, 
know, get some training on how to click the right buttons. It, it, it's quite it's quite different. So the so the adoption strategy is not your typical adoption strategy. So we will take you through our viewpoint of that and. Also, we can provide adoption services off the back of that if you, if you so choose. And the second thing we do, we, we look at your what we call a Microsoft 365 Copilot baseline. So this is looking very much at your readiness as, a, as an organization. So looking at your organization profile, you know, do you actually have an interest in AI, generative AI? Um, what, what are the internal use cases that, that you've already sort of noticed or uh, are, are people engaged in or, or, or interested in, in sort of using Copilot? Um, so it's a score based sort of questionnaire at this stage. Uh, we also look at you know how your productivity apps are configured so is microsoft 365 apps all configured in a, an appropriate fashion to, to adopt copilot and also we take a high level look at your data and security data security and governance just to see what you're doing around data security and governance and making sure that translates to what copilot requires the microsoft 365 assessment this is very much looking at because obviously Microsoft 365 licensing is a prereq so uh, making sure that that's configured in an AI ready um, or, or is it is in a, in an AI ready state so just taking you through what an AI ready Microsoft 365 platform looks like and and yeah just making sure you're you're on the right right lines and um, we also oh, oh, sorry, uh, is, that, is, is that prompt to speed up for me if yeah. is it um, <laughs> Yeah, so so yeah, so that's a readiness assessment, and then off the back of that, there are a bunch of services we put together that that um, yeah, we give you what you need. So so for example, if you need to have a workshop around, if if people internally just want to know a bit more about Copilot and what the capabilities are, we can just do a, a Microsoft 365 Copilot workshop on the on the end there. Uh, preparation services, we've got a host of services around either just adopting Microsoft 365 or moving your data and getting your data structured so it's ready for Copilot. Um, adoption services, like I said, we've got a host of adoption services uh, that we can help you with, including sort of enabling Copilot and looking at sort of plugins and connectors that can help with Copilot. And most importantly, probably is the security advisory. So not only looking at your data security, but also the quality of, the, of your data is really important. So obviously if an AI is interacting with your data, it's, it's got to be useful. So, you know, things like duplicate files and multiple copies of files, it will be quite confusing for a Copilot. So um, I, I will stop talking now because I appreciate we've probably run out of time. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, appreciate it. Um, so, the, literally, there the, that's, the, that's the summary now. So, thank you, thank you to Stuart, also to Matt for going through that. Um, you know, these these are supposed to be quick quick sessions. I mean, forty five minutes runs very quick when you um, when you're trying to demo as much as we're trying to demo. We're learning on a daily basis. Our next sessions next uh, next week on the sixth of December, and we'll do more learning. We'll probably focus a little bit more on the internal deployment and adoption strategy that. Uh, we went through to get this so some of the things that Stuart's referred to about making sure we've got all the, the right switches and buttons clicked to make it make sure it's deployed correctly inside the organization so a bit more on the infrastructure side um, but we'll keep learning and we'll keep showing you the latest uh, the latest things that we're seeing and finding out about it so uh, thank you again for attending thank you for your time this is, is recorded you'll get a copy of this uh, afterwards and some other references that we've used during the session as well. So uh, hopefully we can uh, catch up with you again soon and look forward to the next one. So thanks again for everybody's time. Speak to you soon.